Hi everybody, I'm Trin Johnson and welcome to Dust in My Eye. Today we're going to explore snow. I thought it was a timely, helpful process to learn. Um, I have three different ways we're going to do it and I hope you enjoy it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, hit the cute little bell. Now on to our painting. If you hear a leaf blower in the background or some scraping noises, I think my neighbors have decided to put up their Christmas decorations and clean up before they do it right now. So <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but anyway, on to our painting. I have mixed up some indigo and cobalt in this puddle right here. And we're going to use those for most of our, our paintings. I'm just adding some more water. Also, um, you might be wondering what I have on my table. And we're going to use this for one process. And we're going to use this for another process. And the third process just uses good old water. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is the one that needs to dry. So I'm going to take some drawing gum. Um, this is Pe Pebio. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. But anyway, I'm just going to dip this in there. And I'm going to flick with it. But first, I need to cover the space next to it. Now, you can do this with a toothbrush also. I like the way this little guy bounces. And you might be going, what the heck is that? And where do I get one? And it is actually an old mascara brush. And I just thought, well, that's way too cool. I have to hang on to that in case I find a use for it. So anyway, it makes a whole bunch of different sized dots. And that I find is really cool. Um, so if you have an old mascara brush, this one is rubber. And I think that helps. I don't know how the other ones would work, but this one, he's bendable. And... Um, Anyway, so you, you can definitely use a toothbrush and that would work too. I just like being able to utilize this little guy. And I'm going to clean up my spritzy messes all over the table. And now we are going to let that one dry. While that one's drying, we're going to move on to the next one. Here's my brush rolled underneath. There it is. Okay, this one. Sorry. This one, I'm going to paint my area blue. This is on a 15 centimeter by 30 centimeter arches block that I've just divided into three with very skinny separations because I wanted them to be a decent um, distance apart. So this one, I'm gonna get some water down and I'm just gonna do full blown pages here to show you the snow on the first two. And the third one will add some detail just for funsies, because there's another technique that I would like to show you. Okay, so that's pretty evenly coated. So now I'm going to put this on here. The thing about snow showing up, and um, if you can do it, a night scene, considering how dark it is most of the time in the winter, um, works really nicely for snow because the, the white of the snow really shows up behind or in the dark color. So I'm going to just get this. 
nice color all the way across. If you were doing this um, where there was a horizon and you were painting trees or something, you wouldn't do this over the whole page. But I'm just doing the whole page so I can show you the technique and then you can utilize that for your purposes. Okay, we're gonna let that one dry before we can spatter on it. Oh. I think I'm gonna take a short break here while these dry before we move on to the third one. Okay, I think this is dry. Um, I tried to dry it with a blow dryer and it was very wet over here and spread over there a little bit, but that's okay because this is going to end up with this anyway, right now, actually. So I'm going to do that next. And uh, I apologize if you can hear the, I don't even know what it is, leaf blower in the background because, of course, the second I sat down here to do this, they decided to do that out um, on the driveway next to me. So I'm going to just paint over this with the same color, a little bit of water to it. Now you can use a lot of things to put the white or the white, the um, brisket or um, there's a lot of names it goes under. Um, the other one will come to me. That's maybe more commonly known. Does it say on here? Yeah, liquid frisket. So anyway, um, you can use, like I said, the thing I used, the toothbrush. Um, an old paintbrush that I would, you, if you want to ever be able to use it again for anything, you need to put soap on it first, like rub it on a bar of soap. Um, masking fluid, that's the word I was trying to come up with. Anyway, um, they also um, make this thing, Tim Holtz makes a brush like this in a couple different sizes. And uh, you can fill it with paint and spatter. I suspect it would work for this, um, for the masking fluid. I don't know that I would tend to want to use that though, because I would imagine it'd be kind of hard to clean because you can't really like soap it up ahead of time. The thing I used is really very easy to clean and not, it doesn't have bristles, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, getting damaged, but let me think here. Kind of uneven down there. So like I said, I am not painting a scene today on this one or this one. I'm just trying to show you how the snowy part works. Get rid of some of the excess. Okay, now on this one, this, by the way, is a roll of paper towel that I cut into three pieces. It's not toilet paper. It might look like toilet paper, but it, it's not. I'm going to gently lay that over there for this next one because I'm going to work on this one. In fact, I think I'll put one over here too because this one is kind of messy. It's probably the messiest. Now, I am using gouache, white gouache, um, not acrylic gouache. It's white designers gouache I, gouache. I think it's um, the brand I have is whole bean. Yeah, whole bean, um, permanent white. You can also use, I can you see that? You can also use things like um, Dr. Martin's bleed proof, proof white or um, Copic ink or acrylic ink, anything like that. That's a nice white. And my gouache is right here in this well. I want a nice consistency. I don't want it really runny. 
I don't want it really thick. But I don't want to put my white brush back in my clean paint either, or clean water. So that's why I brought the dropper up, and then I almost forgot to use it. So this is, this is pretty good. Okay. And now I'm going to take this little guy, which I got at the dollar store, and I'm going to paint my gouache in the bottom of this. A little more water. This is kind of a nice one because it gives a nice effect. Now I'm going to use a straw because I find that works better for me. Now, if I was using this method, I would wait until I was done with my whole painting and then do it because obviously it's going to be on top. But it, it does give you a really nice, fine snow. Now, this one, is he dry yet? Nope, he's still a little damp. Um, this I dried with a hairdryer a little bit because it was just paint. This one, I'm not going to do that because it's got the masking fluid, and masking fluid doesn't always like hair dryers. If you use a hair dryer on it, you may never get it off. And I that would kind of defeat the whole purpose of this. So, let's see. I think we're going to take a little break again while that one dries a little more so I can get the fr uh, mask it, mask it, frisk it masking fluid off of it. So I think it's pretty dry now. We're going to give it a try and see if I can get this off without doing damage. This is a little rubber cement eraser that works really well for this. You can also just use your finger, which actually might work better this time. I kind of go between the two. <laughs> now, it's really important to have paper that can handle masking fluid because not all paper can. If it is a really soft paper, like a handmade um, like Shazen does handmade watercolor paper, it does not like masking fluid. So this would not be the method I would do on that kind of paper. Anything that's really soft. Um, or for that matter, if it's too cheap, if it doesn't have a nice cotton content, um, a lot of times that Masking fluid doesn't go well in that either. It, it fights it. So I got most of it off. But you can see that leaves a nice, nice snow. And that one, if you do that one, you do your masking fluid and then you paint your picture. And then you take your masking fluid off at the very end. So you don't remove the flu masking fluid or the frisket until you're done painting the whole scene. Now this third one, I'm going to scoochie this over a little bit. The third one I think is the easiest. And um, we're going to do a little snowman guy with it. So we're only going to put the... Um, paint above the horizon line right now. I'm just adding a little more paint to this because I went through quite a bit of it and I want to make sure it's a good consistency. Okay. I'll get that paint off of there. Now, 
now I'm rinsing my brush and I'm going to put a horizon let me see I think we're gonna go like like that and we're gonna Had clear water above it. I don't know if you can see that. Let me add some blue. I don't know if that helps you. I use my dirty water. Sometimes that makes it easier to see. Now I've kind of got a slope here, which is what I'm trying to do and I'm drying my brush off because I don't want this too ridiculously wet right now I want it wet but I don't want it like um, dripping <laughs> like a puddle I don't need a puddle and this time I'm going to have a nice tissue all ready to go next to me because I want to use that so I'm going to add some paint, just like we did in the middle one. And again, I'm using this dark color because it shows up really well. Remember, now I'm adding a little more cobalt to my mixture over here than to there wasn't much left of it, so it's going to be a little bit more brighter blue. Okay, and this. I want it to get a little bit drier so that it's not like quite so wet but um, while it's doing that I'm going to take my tissue and I'm going to ball it up into a, a circle and I'm going to remove some of the paint and I think this is a super fun way to make a snowman oh see I got too close to the sun there and I Went a little too far out, and I'm going to do Oh, I have a friend. Zelda Puss. Come on, sweetheart. You can't stay there. <laughs> you got to go. You got to go. There you go. Okay. Always a challenge. I will deal with that corner in a minute. But now I think I'm getting pretty good. It's a little wet still right in there. But we're going to try and see what we're going to get. I'm just using water. And I'm going to, let's use this paintbrush. Hit. 
and splatter water. Can you see what it's doing? It makes like little snowballs in the sky. It's kind of a fun effect. There, and now I'm going to let that dry a bit because I want, before I start working on the snowman, I want to make sure that's nice and dry. I take a little bit of that and try and define my snowman where I removed paint I wasn't trying to remove. There. Kind of, it's kind of nice. It gives him a very fuzzy edge. I kind of like that. So now I'm going to get a dry brush and this cobalt and then I'll pat it off a little bit because I don't want a lot on it. And uh, I'm going to sweep just some hills across just shadows in the snow and because snow is not just white. Also, one thing I want to do before this um, dries, I'm thinking about it, is I'm going to take another tissue and I'm going to ball it up a little bit again. And I'm going to make a moon in the sky. Well, I could mask these off, but I like the fuzziness. So I'm going to just do that. Now, we're drying pretty good. Okay, so since my sun is coming from that way, this side of my um, snowman is going to be in shadow. So I'm going to go back to my darker color, but very watered down. And I'm going to just add some shadow over here. Now I'm going to just use water, clear water, and just kind of blend that in. You're probably wondering why I made that a funny mark up there, but I am going to add a little cap. This is just indigo. See if that's too dark. What it is, is too wet. So we might have to wait a minute. Nope, nope, that's kind of wet too. I don't mind it being a little fuzzy though, because the hat's kind of fuzzy. Which brings me to the last thing I want to do, which is get a really tiny 
black spot. and remove it, some paint for a pom-pom. Now I waited a little longer to do that and it's not coming off as nicely, so I'm going to dampen my tissue. See what I can do. It's hard to do it with um, precision. So we'll just let that sit while this dries a little bit so we can work on the other part. Because I don't want to have everything just get too fuzzy on me. Well, that was not what I meant to do. But we're going to have a little bit bigger moon. There. Okay. Now, while that is drying, we're going to work on his face a little bit. Now, I want this guy looking up at the moon. So I'm going to aim his nose this way. And just to get a nice bright orange, I'm going to use my brush and kind of scrub out a little bit so I have a little bit of white there to work with. And now, because it's wet, I have to wait to do his nose. So while his nose is drying, I'm going to work on his arms. And I want just, I've got a little sepia, a little burnt umber. And I'm going to add a little indigo to it too. So I have a nice dark brown. And then just like drawing a tree. I want a flick. I don't want it real even. Get a nice arm. And then uh, we'll get one coming this way. Yes, we will, but we won't do it yet because it's still wet. So... Let's put that on hold. Let's see. I think our snowy background's done pretty good. I'm going to give it a little shot with the hair dryer. I don't want to use a hair dryer too early because I want it to give the paint time to move from the droplets of water. So now, now we're better. Okay, let's go back to our hat. Now, I want a little bit orange for his little nosy. A little bit of orange. Just a teensy bit. And then I, I tend to keep my snowman pretty simple. Just got a little, little, um, I think this is neutral tint. Okay, 
now we can probably do his other arm. Okay, we're going to keep him pretty simple. Need his little fuzzy top. I'm just trying to put a dot of water there. And then we'll put a little bit of paint and see if we can make it move. Heavier pigment. I don't want it really dark, but I just want to get it fuzzy. <laughs> okay, now let's do our little moon. We're just going to use nice buttery yellowy color. I think this is Juan, Juan Brilliant, something Juan, J-A-U-N-E, and a little bit of um, Naples Yellow. If it's got a little white around it, it kind of gives it like a halo. A little bit of dark, a little bit darker in the middle. And then I am going to go back to my cobalt, which now has a little bit of indigo in it. So it's not quite as bright. And, uh, Paint his shadow. Point here and give it just a little more right at the line where he eats the snow bank sitting up on the hill. So there we go. He's kind of cute. Now if you wanted to, you could go on top of that and use a little spatter on top of it. Um, that would be kind of pretty. Just give it a little bit. Um, you could do it with the way we did it before, or you could just be a little more judicious and do it <clears throat> just your old-fashioned splatter way, like... Uh, a little paintbrush and just flick it a little bit. Come on. The smaller the brush you use, the finer your spatter will be. If you use a big wet brush, you're going to get big wet drops. But these little skinny brush, it's a number four or number six. Thing has it's the information has washed off of it <laughs> but it's a four or a six 
Anyway, um, there we go. That kind of gives us a little three different ways of making snow. Um, I'm going to pull the tape off and uh, being its arches, this tape comes off nicely. If you have a problem getting your tape off, use your hair dryer, a little blow dryer, and, and so you can warm up the mastic that's on the back of the tape and it will come up easier. If I could grab it, it would come off. There we go. <clears throat> but there we go. All three different ways of making snow. I'm sure there's lots of other ways of making snow also, but these are the ones I have been using lately. And I hope that helps in your Christmas card tag making <laughs> um, and or all winter uh, because where I live, it will be snowy for the next three months and uh, we be in a lot of snow. So anyway, so I hope this was helpful and I hope I see you back again and thanks for watching. Bye now. Be sure to visit my Etsy shop where I have prints of my artwork along with cute little monsters for sale. See you next time.